A short summary of from testament by Dorothy Hewitt. Dorothy Hewitt born in 1923 she was an Australian feminist poet novelist and playwright she has been called one of Australia's best loved and most respected writers and has been pointed out that she is the poet of sympathy who has a strong faith in humanity her poetry concerns itself chiefly with the unfortunate destinies of those who are down and out She was all in her life a keen lover of nature and the treatment of nature plays a vital role in all her works. He would had a deep passion for Australia and a great knowledge of the nation's history and literature. She has been awarded the Order of Australia Medal for Services to Literature. About the poem from Testament. Testament is one of the poems in collected poems 1940 to 1995. From Testament is a portion from a long poem Testament by Hewitt. Hewitt shares her bitter accusations against secular society whom according to her were destroyers of real heritage of Australia. Hewitt senses a division created by the white man because of their greediness. They displace the aborigines so that they themselves might settle and build gardens for their children. In this poem he would stands against the settlers community who had destroyed not only the land but also the very spirit of Australia she protests the opportunistic colonists and acknowledges her love for aboriginality and the native people of Australia before going deep into the poem one should know the meaning for the word testament what is the meaning for the word testament it is a sign or evidence of a specified fact event or quality Thus the poem is a proof or tribute to the Australian cultural heritage and its native indigenous people. Let me read the poem first which is in the left side of the slide. From Testament. These have I lost being too much beloved and having for their virtue only this that I have loved them. In the beginning lines the poet expresses her genuine love for the landscape and the native people of Australia. He would love the native people of Australia the aborigines for their virtuous character. Lines 428 That cold white wanton with stiff neck pride of centuries of narrow minded squares migrating to a strange dark brutal country where you met the convict shackled on the roads and the hangman's rope cast shadows on the soil. In these lines he would describes that most of the settlers who came to Australia ruined the landscape of Australia in the name of civilization colonists had occupied the beautiful land of Australia with stiff necked pride without any remorse or guilt of their actions she calls them as white wanton who are so cruel and wicked in their attitudes they also lack emotions with small minded superficial or fake love Settlers called Australia not only as a strange dog brutal country but also the aborigines as convicts and hangmen according to settlers aborigines are criminals who are known for violence and like a hangman they only cause death to others but the irony is that though they disliked aborigines its settlers protected themselves by creating shadows and settlement on the soil of Australia lines 9 to 11 Sitting as try their horses their two feet clamp coldly in the mud mush giving birth to sons and all with dignity of english men In these lines the poet focuses on the lethargic attitude of settlers or colonists Settlers encroached the land of Australia like sitting on horses coldly without any remorse or guilt The pride settlers had occupied the beautiful marshy wet land of Australia and transformed their whole way of life. They occupied other people's land and lived peacefully by reproducing their generation. Lines 12 to 18. They carefully translated their whole way and pride of living to a hangman's land. Plowed the dark soil, wrenched order from its chaos. Its sullen, hostile hatred of their hands subdued it. Mixed their coldness with its hunger. Never gave up or ceased to plow and sow, because it was their only living passion. In these lines, the poet says, 
Those settlers consider the land of Australia as hangman's land. They feel pride in living in the land of Australia. When they were in hunger, they never stopped to plow and sow as if it were their own land and country. They also hide their dislike for the aborigines and plowed the country for their passion for living in the beautiful landscape of Australia. Here the poet Hewitt openly confirms that settlers were unfriendly and self-centered by lacking kindness and compassion. Lines 19 to 22 These cold-eyed men with honor in their hearts the passion for the land to feel the soil ache in their thin loins it was like another man's hunger for a wanton woman in these lines he would address us settlers as cold eyed men she even sarcastically says that settlers entered the land of australia with so much honor in their hearts she also compares every settlers to sexually desired man who captured the beautiful island of australia for their own pleasure Lines 23 to 27 Building their red board churches in the clearing puritanical among the ring barked gum trees standing like a witcher sabbath on the sky leading the flock sending their thin dog doctors home to england for their education In these lines the poet says how settlers established their religion by building churches they also attended churches like witches attending meetings in the midnight They also inculcated and influenced aborigines to send their daughters to England for education. Lines 28 to 31. Treating the sad-eyed blacks with kind contempt, shipping their pianos, portraits, rugs from England, building their English houses by the rivers and yet all mad-eyed lonely men with strange misgivings. He would here addresses aborigines as sad-eyed blacks as they lead a miserable life by sacrificing their own land. They have become criminals in their own land. See the use of the two words oxymoron in the poem kind contempt. These contrasting words are used to show the superficial fake love of white man. They not only shipped strange misgivings like pianos, portraits, rugs from England, but also ruin the land by building their english model homes the poet here expresses her view that how settlers instilled psychological mechanisms to accept their way of life and made aborigines mad eyed lonely men the last part of the poem lines 32 to 36 your heritage my love these forefathers who sit with white skulls nodding in the grass holding you with their stiff necked principles as if they were a council of old men crouching like stumps against the red and sea in this last part of the poem the poet describes how settlers with their stubborn principles ruined the natural landscape of australia as a result australians have become like stumps like a bottom part of a tree left after the trunk has been cut down Aborigines have bent or crouched themselves like stumps to listen to the counsel of settlers to change the heritage and lifestyle of Australia. What do you understand from the poem? The poem portrays the destruction of beautiful land of Australia by the settlers in the name of civilization. It also focuses on the self-centered and opportunistic attitude of settlers. The poem also portrays Dorothy Heaver's love for natural landscape of Australia. Thus, he would take pride in presenting the authentic testament or documentation of her own indigenous people. Thank you.